All right, great. Thanks, Kev. Everybody can hear me okay, I'm assuming. Um, so good day or possibly good evening, depending on where you are. Um, a little bit of background about myself. Um, my name is Paul Hodgson. I'm a principal consultant with Identity Works LLC. Uh, we are a sale point partner. I've um, been working in the identity management space for the past 15 years, uh, nine of which are in consulting capacity with Identity Works. Um, worked on quite a few large scale projects. Uh, several different vendor products and definitely have to say that the plugin framework um, by far, you know, is the most flexible um, in terms of, you know, customizing the product or, or um, you know, developing sort of custom solutions that you might need. Um, so when Silpoint reached out to us for ideas on topics for this conference, uh, widgets were immediately at the top of my mind. Um, I built quite a few plugins over the years, but it wasn't until the past year or so when I started looking at widgets. Um, and one of the things I did find was there really isn't a lot of resources out there for building custom widgets. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it was kind of a learning on my own exercise. <clears throat> um, I do see a lot of hype in the plugin channel, so I hope you guys gain some good information about widgets um, and feel empowered to go off and create your own and realize the uh, value that these will add to your install. Um, I'd also like to mention that several of my colleagues are also going to be presenting today and tomorrow um, on plugins and custom SQL reporting. So definitely be sure to talk about their presentations. Um, and we should have some time at the end of this for questions and answers. Um, you'll also find a link for source code. So should you guys want to take advantage of you know, downloading this or looking at this and using it in your environment, you know, feel free to do so. All right, so here's what we'll cover. Um, I'll give you guys an overview of widgets. I know Adam kind of touched on this earlier. Um, we'll go through a simple example. Uh, we'll talk about the different components of widgets, how to build and install them. Uh, we'll talk about maybe some other use cases for widgets and then um, kind of what the source code looks like. So what are widgets? Widgets are components that reside on the homepage in Identity IQ. Um, you can scope uh, them for various users so you can add you know, permissions to them for who can see those widgets. Um, they are a special case of snippets, so one kind of got you here. Um, if you want these to work, um, you will have to set this property to true in your IAQ property file. Um, you know, if you develop a if you develop a widget and try to install a plugin and this isn't set, you know, you're gonna kind of be banging your head against the wall. Um, some out of the box examples, there's the direct report widget, um, latest approvals, um, certification campaigns, my access review. So those are kind of some of the ones that still point shifts with out of the box. Um, and widgets really are, you know, they contain a lot of Angular components. So you can have chart, tables, text, um, including both dynamic and static content. So why are widgets useful? Um, so they're great from a productivity perspective. You know, if you have a lot of operational support staff um, kind of in IAQ on a day-to-day -day basis or your admins in there, you know, you can you can get a lot of information from widgets. It kind of save you a lot of clicks. Um, a lot of the content, you know, one of the things I'm going to show you is a sample widget I created. And the idea is to kind of reduce the number of clicks that you have to get to to get to something and kind of just present that on all in one dashboard. Um, so it can also alert you to potential risks or issues in your environment um, or inform you of actions that you might need to take uh, with a work item or, um, you know, an approval or something like that. Um, they're, they're right in kind of your face when you log in. So let's go into an example. This is actually the first widget I created um, for a, one of our customers. Um, basically built a widget that looks at the server objects in your environment. Um, if you're not familiar with the server objects, those are basically built by the heartbeat service that runs in SailPoint. So about every 10 seconds, uh, there's a service that runs that pulls your system to kind of check in to see, you know, is that server running? Um, you know, what's the, the, how many request threads are there, task threads, what's the CPU and rem memory? Um, how many open files there are and kind of reports back, you know, things, things are in good shape. So um, what it is basically built a widget that just calls a REST service that queries those server objects um, and just kind of returns the different um, attributes that are part of that object for each server. Um, if the server is down, it'll float to the top of the list here. So just kind of gives you a quick overview of, you know, 
what's up and running in your environment. Um, we kind of found this useful. I know some customers probably have some sort of external monitoring tools of their environment, but you know, in this particular case, I think we went a few days without noticing that one of our batch servers was down. Um, so, you know, we weren't kind of fully optimizing our, our tasks, our schedules and our partitions. So having this kind of present and available, you know, kind of showed any sort of, you know, um, server interruptions that we have, whether it's from, you know, patches and a server didn't come back up or, you know, somebody manually went in and, you know, made a mistake and maybe brought down a host or something. Um, and this is also the same information you can get out of the box uh, by going to the, you know, the cog menu, administrator, console, and then environment. So, you know, you can view the same data there. Um, again, it's just kind of reduced the number of clicks and kind of gave you all that data in one place. So what are the different widget components? Um, and how do you build a widget? So I'm going to make an assumption here. If you're not using the SSB, you know, I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, standard services build. Um, step one is basically within the plugin source folder of your standard services build, you know, create a, create a folder for your plugin, you know, give it a name. Um, and then underneath that folder, kind of create the required files and folders. Um, you'll notice, you know, we aren't using database scripts or any sort of external Java library. So it's pretty basic. There's an import folder. Um, here I've just got an install folder with can be where you put the XML artifacts. Um, if you were upgrading the plugin, which you know once you've installed it and if you haven't deleted it, you'd want to have an upgrade folder here too. Um, that's where any sort of you know XML artifact that you may have changed would get applied um, when you go to install that plugin. And your UI folder is going to be where you have your JavaScript, um, and then a templates folder I like to create too, and that's going to be where your kind of your HTML template lives. So that's the HTML code that you're going to see when you load up the widget. Your source folder will be um, your Java code for when you uh, are going to call a REST service. So the widgets basically have an Angular component, which we'll call a REST endpoint. And that's going to kind of return back data from your environment. Um, as I mentioned, the manifest file is kind of the nuts and bolts of the whole plugin. So that's where you're going to have your configuration settings. I'll kind of go into an example of that too. Um, and a build file, if you want to kind of test building this locally, you know, you can create a build file and use whatever build tool you want, if it's Ant or Gradle or Maven. So the manifest file, I do apologize, you know, the code is hard to read. Um, basically, you're going to have a REST endpoint. So you're going to, in your REST resources, you're going to define kind of that service that's going to interact with the, with the Angular code that you have. Um, your snippet section is the important section here, um, where widgets are going to run on your home page. This is kind of the regex pattern you'll want to follow for that. Um, you can specify a certain right to be required. You don't have to do that. Um, if you admit the right required here, um, that code will run for anybody except for, um, you know, won't invoke if you don't have access to the widget. I'll go into that in a little bit here too. So. In here, you're going to have the scripts that are going to be invoked. So, whatever page you're on, these these scripts or these JavaScripts are going to be invoked um, when that regex pattern is is uh, complete. So, the endpoint. This is kind of building out the REST service that you're going to want to have. Um, here, you're going to want you're going to want to have these be a uh, get calls. Um, you know, here are basically defining who's the logged in user. Um, this list result is calling, um, creating a method that's using that abstract list controller, which is on the previous page here. This is kind of a default um, JavaScript file that you can, you know, you can extract from the, the plugin or the sample code I have, um, and that's going to return basically back a list, which is going to populate a table um, in that widget. You can set your authorization for your endpoint here. So, you know what. As long as the logged in user has, you know, certain rights or capabilities, the REST service will get authorized um, and then get invoked. And as far as fetching data, you know, pretty basic. I created a value object here to set a few things that I want to show in the widget. Um, you know, basically just querying the server object for, you know, every object that exists. Um, and then just basically setting if the server is active or inactive, and that's just going to give me an indicator on the widget, you know, if it's up or down. Um, and then just setting some of the different objects, um, 
that I want to display by pulling back those attributes from that XML file um, and returning back that as this list DTO um, object. So as far as Angular JS components, um, these are going to be the pieces that handle the UI part of the widget. Um, so there's going to be a JavaScript file or files. Um, those will contain your controller for the widget, as well as you know the directive to define the contents. Um, you can bundle all that into one file. Um, the example I have, it's all in one file. I've seen other cases where you can kind of split those JavaScript files out separately. Um, the controller is going to take care of, you know, calling that underlying REST service that we just looked at. Um, and then one kind of caveat here is in your uh, constructor for your JavaScript, def definitely just make sure that your um, your widget name matches what you're invoking here in the constructor. Um, otherwise, you might just get a widget that just has a header on it. As far as HTML components, um, so basically you're going to want to include an HTML file um, and then kind of be what's um, presented in the in the widget when you look at it. Um, those can be embedded um, in JavaScript, but they're also easier to read if you use this plugin helper method. So in the JavaScript, you know, like I said, it's tougher to read, but you can use this plugin helper method and basically specify the, the path to that URL um, or to that HTML template file. Um, and it'll parse that out and display that. And then just some kind of tidbits on the template variable. So these get substituted in in your Angular code. Um, the one on the left versus the one on the right, um, the difference here would be that when the page loads and the widget runs, these variables will be substituted in. If you have the um, tags in here with the, the double semicolons or double colons, um, what you're going to see is basically if you have more than more than one page of results, you're just going to see the same data over and over again as you page through it. So it's almost like a cached copy of um, of the data. So if you've got dynamic content you want to display in its page, definitely go with the model on the left. First, XML components, you're going to need a widget object. Um, this is kind of what a widget ob object looks like. Um, and you're going to define permissions and who can see that widget. So this is going to be the, when you click the edit on the dashboard page, you know, what widgets are going to be available to that person when they're logged in. So you define that through an identity selector. Um, otherwise, if you admit that, it'll be kind of available to everybody. So if you look at like the out of the box direct reports widget, you know, anybody that's a manager will basically have that widget available. Um, here you can use match expressions. Just note, you know, the default is kind of an or uh, match expression. If you want to use an and, you know, you're going to want to put a match expression and equals true. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, the plugins can have custom rights and capabilities. So, you know, as part of your XML artifacts, if you want to have a custom right or capability that you want to then assign to users, you know, you can do that. Um, and here I've got kind of a custom right I added, which you know, becomes part of my um, identity selector. So for building and installing, um, you know, again, you can use the SSB to build and install these. Easiest ways to use the UI, you know, go to the cog menu, plugins, um, and upload your file. Um, anything in that import install folder will be imported at that time. And then if you're upgrading, you know, anything in the upgrade folder will be imported. Um, you know, you can also use the IQ console to install plugins as well. So if you're more of a command line oriented person, you can use that. Um, and as far as debugging goes, you know, logs are definitely your friend here. Um, definitely also use the browser developer tool. So looking for things like console errors, so if you have, you know, JavaScript errors or maybe permissions error, errors with your REST calls, you know, the networking tabs kind of kind of shine some light on that. So if you're not seeing what you're supposed to see or trying to troubleshoot things, definitely use kind of these two methods. All right, so then some other use cases for widgets. Um, you know, here's some some kind of other ideas. Once we kind of created one widget, um, it kind of took off with seeing the value that these really added to our, our install base. Um, and we kind of came up with a whole bunch of other use cases. 
Um, so some example cases might be showing counts of objects, you know, how many roles in your system, how many identities, how many accounts, things like that. Um, showing logged in users was really, uh, I think, a powerful one. So um, if you turn on the login and logout auditing features in your environment, um, you can basically capture who's logged into your environment at any given time. And then the nice thing about those audit events, it actually logs which server the, log, the user is logged into. So what we did is we created a widget that shows the logged in users and it actually shows what hosts they're on. So you know, if you get a ticket about someone getting an error or you know, the, you know, maybe poor performance or whatever, you can kind of quickly see how what they're on this server, you know, hop onto that server and look at the logs or see if it's you know, got any issues. So that was a kind of a valuable widget that we created in terms of being a, um, something that we can use from a support perspective. Um, you can show recently failed provisioning transactions and we've even gone as far as, you know, adding buttons on the widget to retry those provisioning transactions. Um, we've captured what the task schedule is. So it'll kind of show you, you know, what tasks are running in your environment, what the upcoming schedules are for particular tasks. Um, we've done a widget that shows which plugins are installed in your environment. Um, you could also do things like showing links from the debug menu. So, you know, maybe showing like the about page in the database menu, um, you know, the, the monitoring and, and meters and things like that. You could probably build a table of a widget that just shows all those links and you can quickly, you know, deep link to those, those different pages. Um, showing task metrics, so things like how long tasks are taking to run, what the average runtime. Um, you could also do things like building a table of quick links. So maybe if you want to save some real estate on the home page, um, building out a table, you know, that just kind of lists all the different quick links you have access to, and you can kind of directly link through those. Um, one of the ones I was recently working on too is showing a, a list of all the report results. Um, so you know, reports that you have access to, you kind of quickly see what the results are and, you know, link right to those task result pages and see, um, see what those are. Um, definitely, if you have any other use cases or things like that, you know, feel free to comment in the chat. Um, and just on the right is kind of some examples of the out of the box widgets. So, you know, they don't have to look like, uh, like a data table, you know, they can have other components, you know, it's all HTML and JavaScript. So you can definitely be as creative as you want, um, you know, including kind of graphs and, you know, things like that. Um, as far as source code, you know, it's pretty basic from a, from a source code perspective. There's not a lot of artifacts that you need. Um, I know when I initially looked at widgets, I was thinking, you know, they're really complex. And as I kind of started to, to get into them, you know, you kind of realize, you know, once you get one done, it's pretty easy to kind of recreate others. Um, and that's it. So questions? Um, I did link out my email in here, my Discord address. So I'm happy to take any sort of questions. and. Definitely thanks to Jordan and the SailPoint crew for putting this on and uh, allowing us to present today.